Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. As always, thank you for watching. And today we've got a look at Zorn OS 12.1. Now I'm going to add Zorn OS to my list of a distribution for new Linux users, especially if they come from Windows 7 or even Windows 10. So we're going to take a look at why I say that. Uh, we're also going to look at a few things that allow Zorn to stand out. And uh, we'll dig into some other things as far as their website and their overall consistency with their UI and theming, which is a big part of... Uh, really what makes Zorn a little unique from other distributions. I can think of some like Farron OS which do an exceptional job with uh, theming and that kind of thing. So anyway with all of that said let's jump in. Now the first thing I want to point out to you is the start menu over here. Wait a minute did I say start menu? I meant to say application launcher but it looks so much like the Windows 7 start menu. You'll notice here the main categories on the left which will launch you into uh, the various applications. And then on the right, you have the user up top, along with quick access to your home folder, documents folder, music, so on and so forth. Uh, quick access here to the software center, quick access to the settings, and then the activities overview, which is actually the same overview you would see if you ran the GNOME desktop. Now, Zorin uses the GNOME stack, and they've certainly modified some things here and done some work um, with the overall UI. Also, I'll go ahead and let you know that Zorn is based off of Ubuntu. Now, I'm running this uh, on a very minimal spec system. It's an HP stream with 2 gigs of RAM and an Intel Celeron processor, so it's certainly not a beast. And I've noticed that the OS is a little sluggish with this hardware, but uh, I'm not blaming that on the OS as much as I am the actual hardware. Uh, moving on here, you've got uh, shutdown, logout, so on and so forth on the bottom as well as quick search. So if you take a look at that from the muscle memory perspective, anyone coming from Windows 7 uh, would be familiar with this layout. And for that matter, anyone coming from XP or Windows 10. Now with Windows 10, you've got those you know lovely tiles that you would see out here uh, added to this. But again, I think from a muscle memory perspective, now if... If you look at that and, and then you look down here at the bottom panel, it also coincides with that Windows 7 feel in that you've got your icons from your favorites here in the bottom panel just like you would see in Windows 7. Now I know some of you are saying quit making that correlation, but I can't help but kind of point that out. And that's one of the reasons I say this would be a good distribution for someone coming from Windows. It's a matter of familiarity or muscle memory or whatever you want to call it with the UI. I think anyone coming from that environment would move over to Zorn OS and be very comfortable, very much at home here. Now to add an icon here to the bottom, you can simply go in and choose an application. Uh, well, we've already got Ziri there. Let's add Firefox. You can right click that icon and click add to favorites. And now that'll be uh, listed here in the bottom panel. At the same token, you can right-click that and choose Remove from Favorites. All right, so the overall feel of this is uniform, and the theming is certainly uniform. In fact, Zorin does a, an exceptional job at applying their theme throughout, and I'm going to show you some examples of that here in just a minute. Uh, some other operating systems that kind of stand out and do an excellent job with theming um, that come to mind would be Farron OS, for example, and the tool sets in place there for theming. So let's jump over here into settings, and we'll take a look real quick at one of the tools that's in place for theming. Now, if you're not familiar with, you know, where all the settings are and everything, if you're new to Linux, um, you may be hesitant to go in and start changing things around. But the Zorin Appearance tool makes that easy to do. So we're going to take a quick look at that. 
And again, you're going to notice a little lag. Now, you've got three layouts here that you can choose. And I'm not going to actually change these because previously I was working on a video for Zorn and started changing these rapidly and run into some issues within the video. So I'm going to try to avoid that. And I'll just point out to you that the first two layouts are Windows-esque. And I know you hate hearing the word Windows out there for all the Linux lovers. But the first one here, you've got to admit, that looks like Windows 7. The second one is more closely matched to, I'm going to say, Windows XP. And when you change to that, the only thing that changes that I've seen is the icons go away here. And you simply have the Windows minimized into the bottom panel. Now, the third layout is going to be familiar to you if you've ever looked at the GNOME desktop or Ubuntu's Unity desktop. Now, you've got a few more options here. Uh, you can toggle on or off the uh, live desktop. Uh, I've got this turned off. It was on by default, but if you were to switch that on, you could choose Home, Trash, Mounted Volumes, and Add Shortcuts uh, to the Desktop. You've got another option down here as far as interface. If you come from the Mac OS side of things, you could change the controls in your Windows from the right to the left. And then by default, Enable Animations was turned on, and I turned that off. Now you've got three other tabs here, and this is where things get a little interesting. So under theme, you're going to see these pre-configured themes uh, with light and dark colors for the most part, with um, or light and dark backgrounds for the various colors. So here we have the dark background. We could switch that over to, say, the green, and you'll notice that the light blue changes to green. Now when these themes apply over, they apply everywhere. You'll notice it here over the Z. You'll notice it here over the system tray icons. And it even affects things like the uh, file manager. So we'll launch into that. You'll see that there. And then you'll also notice it in areas like the browser. So one other thing I want to point out while we're here, uh, not to get off track from Google Appearance, but uh, the Chromium uh, start page here is this modified Google search page that really closely matches the whole Zorn OS down to it changes the color highlights as you change the theme. So let's jump back into that real quick. So uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, blue and white background. And then you'll notice again that that's going to change even within the browser. So the whole appearance thing really has a consistency that's hard to find. Again, I can think of other operating systems that do a really good job like Farron OS and a few others, but you don't see this uh, set up in this fashion in every distribution. All right, so the next panel we have here is fonts. So this would allow you to go in and change your fonts for application windows, titles, things like that. And last but not least, we've got panel, which is uh, controlling this bottom panel. You could move that from the bottom to the top. You could turn on or off uh, Intelligent Auto Hide, where the panel would move out of the way and disappear. Uh, you could change the height and then the transparency here. And I think by default this was set at 50. So this Zorin appearance here, I think, would give, again, someone who's just, you know, they're not the type of person who likes to go in and tweak things that much, or maybe they're a little leery of it because it's Linux and they haven't done it before, this goes a long way to giving them quick access to make some changes uh, without, you know, really messing things up. All right, so I want to jump over again to the browser, and I want to show something else here that I think is impressive, and that's the Zorn OS website. If you go to the website, it's consistent with the theming and everything of the actual operating system. It's also attractive. It's well laid out, uh, professional looking. And so I think that goes a long way to show someone who's new, who's maybe exploring what options are out there. When they come to this page, they're going to be impressed with what they see. And I think it just shows that, you know, there's been attention to detail paid as well as someone who really cares about how things are presented. And so it just, you know, that as opposed to some ugly 1995 looking mess of a website, I think would cause people to kind of shy away from that particular OS. So developers who pay attention to this, I think are doing themselves a favor. Now also, uh, their help section I thought was nicely laid out. 
it's not a cluttered mess, you know, with a list of uh, forum type layout where you've got, you know, a million different things where people have posted things. And, um, you know, this is a very organized, well thought out, get started with Zorin help section. So you've got install, system requirements, upgrade, uh, set up wireless hardware, and this coincides with the uh, Wi-Fi driver tool that's in place. Activate graphics cards and install apps. And then down here at the bottom, you have help from the community with their form and RC. And again, I just say, great job here. You've kept things simple and laid out in a manner that anyone can come in and navigate. So without feeling overwhelmed. So, uh, all right. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Now, I want to point out a couple of other things here. Um, one is, if you are coming from a Windows environment, and again, I say that this OS is geared uh, to someone who's maybe coming from Windows, uh, you're going to see Wine in place. So you've got uh, Wine configured in a way that would save the person some time who's not familiar, or, and, or save the person some time, but also uh, some aggravation if you're not familiar with what all is involved in setting up Wine. So you've got Wine tricks in place, uninstall Wine software, play on Linux, uh, and then your configure Wine launcher here already in place. So if you've got that crappy Windows software, I'm kidding, uh, or that good Windows software, which there's very few of, I'm kidding again. Uh, but anyway, if you need to set up your Windows software, if you've got that one piece of software that you you know you must have in order to be able to use your operating system the way you need to, then Wine um, in a lot of cases can help you with that. Plus, there have been some recent updates that improve the support of uh, Windows software. So that's nice to see in place, and that is again something that you don't always see pre-configured um, in a Linux distribution. Now, I'm going to say that Zorn is a medium um, OS as far as the amount of software that's pre-installed. Their selection is good. They haven't thrown, you know, tons of software in here that you may not even know what it is. I think they've got a good balance. And uh, so if we were to start up here with accessories, you're going to see some things from the GNOME desktop side of things, files, photos, weather, so on and so forth. Uh, and then they've got just a few games, but I thought it was funny. you got Solitaire and Mines. And I'm just going to ask you, where have you seen those two games before? Um, under Graphics, you've got GIP and Simple Scan, and then LibreOffice Draw. Uh, under Internet, you've got Chromium Browser, uh, Empathy, Firefox Browser, Geary, and the Zorin Web Browser uh, Manager. And I had not actually seen that before. And let's see if it's going to launch. I think I remember before. Okay, yes, it did. All right. So this allows you quick access to the various browsers. And I believe that Chromium was default, and then I installed Firefox. And then you've got a couple of other options here. And uh, so this is separate than if you just were to go into the software manager and install from there. And they may not be available. Well, I would think that web would be and Firefox would be uh, as well as Midori. So maybe I take that back. Uh, but at any rate, this would allow you to go in and quickly add or remove those browsers. All right, so uh, let's keep moving here. You've got Office. You're going to see LibreOffice, Contacts, and Calendar. Under Sound and Video, uh, I installed VLC as well as VocoScreen. But you see here videos, rhythm box, so a good mix. And then let's look under system tools here. So you've got additional drivers. So this is software that would go out and look for um, non -proprietary, or proprietary drivers uh, that would match your system hardware. You've also got backup tool, disk, online accounts, which you see in the GNOME desktop for setting up your Google accounts or Yahoo or uh, anything like that. Uh, the software center, software and updates, software updater. And I'll just let you know, I've had this installed for about a week, and I've had, I think, three updates, all of which were fairly small updates, and everything applied fine. Um, startup application control here. So we'll just kind of launch into that, and we'll see what's starting up. 
live app workaround, workaround for CD app issue. So a few things there in place. And let's go back to system tools. Uh, startup disk creator. Now I installed tweak tool and we'll take a look at that in just a minute and I'll tell you a little more about why I installed that and kind of what I found. Uh, then here is the Windows wireless drivers. Uh, so if you were having issues with your wireless card so if we had Windows drivers that we had to apply for uh, our uh, Wi-Fi card uh, this is already set up for you so that you can go in and get things going and there was a time um, you know 10 15 years ago where that was a real hassle within Linux was getting your Wi-Fi card to work not so much today with the kernel where it is today and uh, hardware where it is today. Typically, I find that you can install Linux and it just picks right up. Really depends on your hardware. Let's go back to System Tools. And then you had Zorn Appearance there, which we looked at earlier. Now, I installed Tweak Tool because, again, based off of the GNOME stack, I wanted to see what extensions I could set up and things like that. Well, when I did it kind of opened up some things for me as to what's going on in the background with Zorin. And what I mean by that is now I can see over here the name of the theme. So you've got the blue, the light, or excuse me, blue, light, and dark, green, light, and dark, so on and so forth. And you see that throughout um, your different settings here, kind of what all's in place. But also what I found was in, in extensions, when I went to add an extension, I saw here at the bottom you have Zorn extensions. Now whether these are actual extensions that were made by the Zorn team and, and added or if these were extensions from another source, I, I don't know honestly, uh, but I just noticed that there was a list, a long list here of various Zorn extensions and some of this is in play to set things up as we see them here throughout the UI. So I found that interesting. And I was able to install the GNOME Tweak tool directly from the application manager. So let's take a look at that real quick. And you'll just notice that the theming is in play there as well. Now this is your typical GNOME um, application center. And you know they have, I would guess, they have their own repositories in place. Uh, don't hold me to that. I need to go back and look at that to make sure that's the case. I'm 99% sure it is. At any rate, um, the theming and everything, again, matches the rest of the system. So you don't feel like you've just moved into something that doesn't belong, so to speak. Um, overall, the experience on this hardware, I really don't want to speak to that. It's been sluggish on this particular hardware. Um, and I even question if I've got a really good install or if maybe I just had a bad install. And I probably need to install this, some, maybe a different ISO, uh, a later ISO on some different hardware just to get a, a better experience. Because the experience on 2 gigs of RAM with a Celeron processor, and let's just jump over here and look at this and you'll see the specs, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but you'll see how things launch just a little slow. So we'll go into details. So 2 gigs of RAM. It's an N2840 uh, Celeron processor with Intel Bay Trail uh, graphics card. So it's not a speed demon by any chance. Nothing to brag about, that's for sure. But I, uh, I would say that to you that if you've got a system with, or your system specs, if they're close to that, um, I'd be interested to know if your experience was fast and fluid because mine's been a little lackluster. I'll just leave it at that. Overall, again, I think that with what's been put into place here to give a consistent feel and a real close match to a Windows environment, again, I'm going to add this to my list for Windows users that are looking for that transition. And maybe they like the UI of Windows. Maybe they appreciate that layout and they're not looking for something radically different, then I would say take a look at Zorn OS for sure. And I hope this helps you if that's something you've had interest in. Appreciate you all watching, and we will check you later.